It's one and done. A new challenge series here on this channel, where as you might guess by the name, we're going to be going through all 31 NHL teams and maybe an expansion team at the end and simming one season, one shot at winning the Stanley Cup. That is what is at stake. Kind of a modified version of the Masters tournament that you might have seen me do on here. Something that I'm going to revisit more than likely in NHL 21, but something that I didn't have really, you know, the time to do at this point in time, or a month and a half out from NHL 21. So we'll see what happens on that front. Did I just say NHL 22? I might have said NHL 22. It's going to be 2021. It's, it's scary. It's the last day of August. I'm horrified. Regardless, we kick off this journey. It's alphabetical order. We start... With the Anaheim Ducks. Now I do have a bit of a bit of a bit of rules to get to, a bit of a rule set to get to. Although we are keeping it pretty simple. Now, as far as this is set up, number one, we're using my custom roster, which I don't think too many people are going to complain about. Although, of course, that does mean some draft picks are out of date, whatever. We're still using the most recent draft picks, so like obviously like San Jose's pick will be with Ottawa. It's not going to be too big of a factor, I wouldn't imagine, until we get to the Sens, and it will put us at a disadvantage for San Jose. But yeah, that's it. We're using my custom roster. Secondly, I'm allowed to change player types to get the most out of the chemistry, because why not? People yell at me if I don't. And perhaps the biggest thing of all, I am only allowed three trades per team. I could sit here and demolish Anaheim and make this roster unrecognizable. On the flip side, I could also sit here and say, let me just make the best team I can with what we have and see what happens. I wanted a happy medium, so it's going to be three trades per, so I really have to make sure that I hit the mark with those three trades and identify our biggest weaknesses to try and push this team over the edge. This is the starting roster that we have here. Now, a thing of note, I'm not going to be changing the coaching staff whatsoever. The randomly generated coaching staff that we get at the start is what I'll be sticking with and adapting to. But regardless, this is the team with Jakob Silverberg, Ryan Getzloff, and Ricard Raquel. A second line of Troy, Terry, Sam Steele, and Trevor Zegras. So... You know, right here, the strategy, if anything, is the number one, see how they do, but potentially boost up that overall a little bit to give them a little bit more trade value heading into the deadline if I decide it's the best time to move them. Third line, we have Max Comtois, Adam Henrique, and Sonny Milano. And a fourth line of Carter Rowney, David Backus, and Max Jones on a plus five. Defensively, it's not great, as you'd expect. We have Michael Delzato with Hampus Lindholm. Josh Manson alongside Cam Fowler, and a third pairing of Eric Goodbranson and Matt Irwin. The goaltenders, of course, John Gibson and Ryan Miller. So there are some players who are like, huh, where are they? Defensively, Christian Juice, uh, Jacob Larson, not a great fit with this coach. And the two biggest forward exceptions, Nick Delorier, and the biggest is Danton Heinen, who's just not a good fit with this head coach. So more than likely, we're going to end up moving one Danton Heinen. In terms of getting this underway, we are pretty much good to go. Uh, the one thing I will say, uh, in terms of like rules and injuries and stuff like that, first and foremost, I'm actually going to uh, turn injuries off here. Uh, we'll be using the normal preset that I typically use uh, with sliders, but yeah, injuries will be off, and aside from that, uh, everything is looking good. I really have no reason to change that. Of course, auto-rotate will be on, auto-scouting, even though it doesn't matter. Uh, well, I should turn Sim Sim, uh, Sim, 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 Engine scoring up to medium. Trade difficulty will be on hard. Of course, computer trades we can leave on. Half the time I normally wouldn't leave it on, but you know what? It is what it is. So there you go. You get a look at the rules. We are good to go from here. With that, I think what I want to do is kind of get a baseline for where this team is. And we'll see what happens from there. You know, it's going to be interesting to see, of course, with how the sim engine works, whether or not we can get that, you know, really good jump start to the season, despite not having all that good of a roster. So we start off our season against the Arizona Coyotes, and we will see what happens here. 
in terms of the uh, overall setups, I uh, will say. So, yeah, it's it's not great. Uh, compared to Arizona, we are outmatched in every single regard. It's going to be interesting, though, to see how this team does, because, again, it, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, that we're out of it. Crazier things have happened with the Sim, but I think if we're not a very good team, I can really screw it up for myself if I don't make the jump to improving the team at the right point in time. As the voice gives out, the voice gives out. But you know what? Hey, it happens. It happens. You, you talk into a microphone as much as I do. You stream as much as I do. You record as many videos as I do. Occasionally, the voice is just going to be like, screw it. I've had enough of you. Speaking of had enough of you, uh, this team, <laughs> we're 5-5. Five and five. It's actually not that bad. But we'll see what happens here throughout. We're going to finish this month with a winning record of 8-6. and six. And not to say we're going to use one of our three trades here. Now, in terms of the rest of the series, let me know what you think. Because I was wondering if I should have to use the trade finder to make it even more difficult. Let me know what you think about that. Although that might be limiting things just a bit too much. What I want to do is take a look at those around the league. The trade blocks around the league. So someone like Travis Hamannick is available, fits the defensive scheme as well, hasn't done much for Calgary, but he would certainly be an improvement on the likes of Eric Goodbranson, or really it'd more be Matt Irwin, I would say. But do we want to use our trade on Travis Hamannick and David Savard? I don't know if we do. You know, really that's going to be the question is, are we pulling the trigger on a trade at the right time? Eric Hall is available, only fits in on the first line. Oof. Of course, the later we go into a season. Now, Jared Spurgeon's already available. I was going to say the later we go into a season, uh, the more likely we are to find teams giving up their big players. Spurgeon's off to a, eh, not a great start, but not horrible. Fits in on the top pairing. I mean, there's no doubt we need to improve this defense. Hello. Ooh. Ooh, double or nothing, Petrie and Weber in the same trade. That's tough to give up. Now, see, that is where the strategy comes in, because we could go out here and try to acquire all five of these members of the Habs, and it would significantly improve our team if they fit. Petrie fits the second pairing, as does Weber. Tatar fits in the top six. Sherratt, okay, maybe we won't get Sherratt as well. And then Byron doesn't really fit in, but Petrie, Weber, Tatar... In the same trade, there's a lot of cap to take on, but it's not my uh, not my problem beyond this season. Letty and Boychuk. Letty fits the top pairing. Really, we want to get these two-for-one, three-for-one specials, I guess, in terms of these trades. Vlasic's available. Clint Costin. I think we might have a winner, although Vancouver. Alex Edler, top four. Second pairing for Myers. All pairings for Tanev. Interesting. So we could go Petrie and Weber or Edler Myers Tanev. But I think no doubt we have to take advantage of the fact that there are some defensemen to acquire right now. And if you look at this defense, I mean, there's room for Del Zotto or Good Branson. So like two defensemen and then Tatar is probably the better way to go instead of three defensemen. Although, if we get three, that rules out Delzato, Goodbranson, Irwin. Which would be very nice. We essentially steal half of Vancouver's defense, make it our own. And then we just need to look to add some forwards. That Vancouver trade might be the one. Is it the right time, and would there be a better trade in the future? Perhaps. But I think already, with that trade available, we have to go for it. That Tyler Myers contract sucks. Uh, but we have the cap space to pull off this deal. And we will look to do just that. We also have the prospects to give up in this deal. So the hope, I don't think they'll take Good Branson. But if I can give up uh, Del Zotto, Christian Juice, and uh, Matt Irwin, who is not a part of this team, we would actually be over the maximum cap for next season because of uh, the Tanev extension? Or I guess some of the contract... No, Tanev doesn't have an extension. He's UFA. I guess because of some of the contract extensions we'd already have. I guess that's an issue too. Right now we have cap space, but next year do we have cap space? And apparently the answer is no. I mean, Terry and Delorier, their deals kick in. Sonny Milano has a deal that kicks in. Who the hell has a contract that kicks in next year that really screws us? 
I don't really see where that's happening. So I'd have to add somebody who makes a, a decent amount of money here. It would appear. This is where Danton Heinen could really come in handy. Like I said, unfortunately, just not a good fit for the team. We're going to try to rely on chemistry. So we'll add Del Zotto. We'll, uh, well, well, who fits this team better, Del Zotto or Good Branson? Honestly, it's Good Branson. Del Zotto, Juice, and Irwin, if I can. We'd still be over the cap for next season. Are they willing to retain on Chris Tanev? That actually really concerns me now for what our situation might be next season. Or, you know, apparently I'd still be over the cap for next year. I mean, granted, yeah, his deal expires, but I mean, like, I, I thought something else would happen. Okay, so the Vancouver deal's off the table. There's just too much cap there. Way too much cap. Where the hell is this money coming from, though? That's what I don't get. Like, I'm not seeing this extra cap that all of a sudden is going to push us over the edge. Like It's not like someone's all of a sudden getting a $7 million contract. Unless it's like projecting that the cap is going to plummet. So I'm going to have to try to use Good Branson. Which there's no guarantees of that working. We'll look at Good Branson. We'll look at Heinen. I want to try this one more time. I have a good feeling about this Canucks deal. But for these three. Okay, so we would have to use Good Branson. But it's Edler, Tanev, and Myers, or Myers and Tanev, if you're going in proper order, for Branson and Heinen so far. And obviously, uh, we would have to use uh, prospects in the deal, but Isaac Lundstrom's never going to make it for me, nor is Benoit Olivier Guru, so we could look to use him. And at this point, we pretty much wouldn't have to worry about anything uh, defensively. So I guess the question is, will this trade go through? The answer is no. If I take out the second, the answer is still no. If I take out the third, the answer is still no. So Guru's value, I guess, offsets quite handily from uh, Edler. We'll go with a second and a third here as well. And that goes through. So there we go. We have our first deal. We have two lefts. But that should pretty much sort out the defense. It's now Edler, Fowler, Lindholm, Myers, Manson, and Tanev. Try to get away with uh, sending Matt Roman through waivers, and we succeed. And we'll see what we can do about trading Michael Del Zotto, if possible. Although, he doesn't exactly have that much value. Uh, so we'll go best lines here. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think I still have the sole word document up to know where exactly I want to put everybody. Trevor Zegra has already gone up by a point, by the way, which is very promising. Uh, wow, Rowney, you are in the uh, complete wrong spot. There you go, buddy. So defensively now, let's see how these players fit in. So Manson only fits in on the second pairing. Tanev's good anywhere. Myers only fits in on the second pairing. Hampus has to be on the top pair. Edler, preferably in that top uh, four. Ooh. Okay. So we do have a slight issue. In that, I think Hampus Lindholm is going to have to be third pairing with Tanev. It's not the worst case scenario, though. But we have Edler and Fowler. Which I'd probably just make them both two ways. Or we could make Edler a DFD. I'm actually going to leave that defense as it is for now. It looks like we could get a little bit more chemistry out of it. But not by a ton. But that defense is at least solid. And like I said, we'll see how Terry, Steele, Zegra, Comtois, Milano, how these guys happen to do. But let me know what you think. Would you have uh, gone for that trade from Vancouver, or would you have looked at Petrie and Weber? So uh, two big impact players as opposed to just kind of a, a general improvement upon the defense. Let me know what you would have done in that situation. We will sim another month here. And take it from there, depending on how things go. We kicked the ever-loving hell out of the Canucks. But immediately after that, we have uh, begun to struggle. 10 and 8, losing to Detroit is not exactly not exactly the, uh, the ideal situation here, is it? Now down to 10 and 12. This trade is backfiring is what this trade's doing. Whew. I mean, maybe we're just, you know, regressing to our actual, our actual skill level. But 
Man, 12 and 15 after improving the defense. Not a single pity point so far this season. That is far, far from ideal. As Ricard Raquel is leading this team in points as it stands. Let's take a look at the defense, see what we're dealing with here. Edler's been all right. Fowler's been all right. Manson and Myers are okay. Oof, Tanev and Lindholm do not get along. Yikes. What are we going to do about that? I don't know what we're going to do about that aside from like change player types. It's not too much we can do there. Aside from, again, you know, slightly changing up the player types and hoping for the best. Pretty much the best thing we can do is like change all of our defensemen to two ways. We'll lose a little bit of chemistry, but not a ton. How's the offense performing? Silverberg's been fantastic so far. Getzloff has been very strong. Raquel's been very strong. You know, the youth line, Terry, Steele, and Zegras are getting crushed in five-on-five -five play. That third line is abysmal as well in terms of five-on-five -five play. So David Backus with 21 penalty minutes, by the way. So the big thing right now is our goaltending has been abysmal. Thank you, John Gibson. And the middle six just isn't quite clicking the way we would want it to. So again, we're going to take a look around the league and see what we're dealing with in terms of who's available on the block and if there are any kind of impact forwards that we can add here because while this defense right now is scaring me with how it's underperforming, so you have David Savard and Nick Felino. This defense is scaring me with how they're underperforming, but we are pretty much locked into it unless there's a can't-miss deal that comes up. Eric Halla, I just... Eh, Halla and Boyle, it's just not enough. <sighs> Spurgeon, Koivu, Felino. I like Jared Spurgeon, but I don't think he's enough either. Maybe, just maybe, Petrie Weber Tatar was the way to go. I think even I'm starting to have regrets at this point. You still have Letty... And Boychuk, Philadelphia with Grant and Raffle, P.O. Joseph, Lasik still available. I don't think we're going to have any forwards here, so no help on the way unless we were to take the rest of the unwanteds from the Canucks. So we are currently stuck with this team. We are listed as hopeful, but uh, yeah... Yeah, I'm I'm not as confident as I was even 10 minutes ago. Uh, so let's go ahead and change all of our defensemen. Now, you can get better chemistry with OFD and DFD, but we don't really have a, a true offensive defenseman. Even Cam Fowler was on the fringe of actually being able to produce in an offensive defenseman role. So, yeah, it's it's a rough spot to be in. We'll change Manson. And Tanev over. And we'll, uh, we'll hope for the best. We'll hope for the best. So good old Josh Manson. Change you over to a two-way. Maybe get you a little bit more involved offensively. And then again, Chris Tanev on that ridiculous deal. Thank God uh, injuries are off. <laughs> Otherwise, I certainly... Oh, that's... Well, the greatest number eight in Anaheim Ducks history. It's Chris Tanev. Fantastic. Uh, hold, hold, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Anaheim Ducks retired numbers. Like, do the Ducks not have Tamu's number retired? Like, what? Oh, okay, they only have it honored. Do the Ducks not do retirements? It says retired and honored numbers, Solani, Korea, and Niedermeyer. I guess the Ducks don't do, like, actual jersey number retirements? They just do honorable mentions, essentially. I don't know about that one, Chief. I don't know about that one. So, the chemistry is still half decent. I'll take that. Let's see how this team can do over the next month, because, yeah, if we, uh... We have another poor month here. We could already see ourselves pretty much on the outside looking in. I mean, we're dead last in the division right now. Ten points back of the division leader. This could get out of hand throughout the month of December. We really do need our results to come through here. So 
That is the game plan. Is Jared Spurgeon. Two first round picks for Spurgeon. He goes to the Dallas Stars. Again, let me know what you think in regards to having computer trades on or off. I, I imagine most people would just be like, yeah, leave them on. It'll be fine, which I, uh, I do tend to agree. But hey, like I said, first one of these videos, I want to leave it open uh, to critiques, criticisms, suggestions, and the like. And unfortunately, I, I think I'm due for a lot of critiquing and criticism because, yeah, not having the forwards available on the block. Now, I'm not limited to only trading uh, for guys on the block, but obviously like, that's what we want to do is we want to get those bargain options and hopefully we'll be able to find one or two here because it looks like we're absolutely going to need it. So again, we'll kind of take inventory of who might be available. And unfortunately, again, I don't think help's coming. I'm surprised Chicago's not selling a little bit uh, harder than they are. I don't think Nick Felino and Riley Nash will solve our problems. Eric Hall is still there. I just need someone to pair him with. Still got Petrie and Weber. You know, a second deal with, uh, for defensemen involving Montreal for Petrie, Weber, Tatar might be in the cards here. I wouldn't rule that out, that that is exactly what could happen. There is not a single forward available right now that can help us out. So we are still left to rely upon the youth of this team for as, uh, ugh, for as, as bad as it is. John Gibson. I don't know what's with elite goalies simming poorly, but Miller's played well. The AI's just not really playing him. Silverberg with 37 points. I mean, solid from the top line still. No real complaints. Terry on 19 points. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. Putting the youth together hasn't really worked. Sam Steele, though, is up to an 81, which is pretty nice. It's just the middle six has been abysmal. Absolutely abysmal. Problem is, like, nobody on the second line is really necessarily great at playing the third line. Maybe we'll try this. We'll go Comtois, Steele, Milano, Terry, Zegra, and, of course, centered by Henrique. Defensively, Edler uh, has left a bit to be desired so far here in Anaheim. He's, he's gotten worse. Fowler and Edler's not really working. Myers and Manson's not really working. Tanev and Lindholm, yeah. Yikes. I mean, third pairing, you have to look at Tanev. I guess you can put him with Tyler Myers. You know, looking at it, it's just not amazing. And then Hampus pretty much has to play a top pairing. Manson has to be on the second. So who's the best fit on that second pair? I guess it really doesn't matter. It's about the same. Uh, let's go with Lindholm. Well, yeah, we'll just go with that. Edler Lindholm, Manson Fowler. We're still just, we're stuck at the moment, unfortunately. It is getting to the point, though, where I might have to try to strike a deal for a player that the team doesn't want to get rid of. But again, that's that gets to be really problematic. I mean, you're talking about everybody, you know, every prospect in one shot. One foul swoop. I mean, you're talking about a Zegra, you're talking about a Comtois, just to get, you know, a high-value player in one deal. It's it's not necessarily an easy thing to do, so is it worth the risk, the risk-reward of this type of challenge? Right now, though, losing more games than I'd prefer for us to see. Still on the outside looking in, closing in. I mean, yeah, we're almost 10 points out of a playoff spot right now as we hit the totally not all-star break. 23-24-4. and four. Is this a team... That's going to be able to make it. I don't know. <laughs> Still listed as hopefuls. I desperately need the availability of some insurance here. Otherwise, we are in a lot of trouble. I mean, you see teams like Calgary adding more, but it's not high value. Yeah, we're going to have to... Uh, I mean, Detroit's really fire selling right now. We're going to have to go... For a big gun that's uh, not exactly on the block. Or we try the Petri Weber Tatar swoop. I mean, Montreal still has all three of them available. It's just that's a rough trade, to, you know, a rough trade to make when we need as much forward help as we do. 
But it does make sense in a lot of ways. There's no other help here. Well, let's take a look at the team. And uh, we'll see... We'll see what we got. We'll see what we got here. But I'm not... Uh, I'm not feeling too good about this. Edler... Okay, Edler and Lindholm are working well together. Manson and Fowler, not so much. Myers and Tan have been okay together. So the defense has kind of turned the corner a little bit. But still, I... Uh, man, Sam Steele's up to an 82. It's obvious. Like, we need changes in that middle six. The fourth line's good. The top line's good. That middle six right now is sinking us, as is uh, the extremely subpar play of John Gibson. If he can't turn it around, like, I refuse to be sunk by John Gibson not getting the job done again. But here we go. I mean, let's sim about two weeks in to the month and we'll see again if there's anybody on the block that we can pick up. We need to see this team start winning games hand over fist to really put the pressure on and work their way towards the playoff spot. Miko Koiva, Minnesota has acquired three first round picks already in the sim as we get just back to back shutout losses. Schultz and Marlowe to Arizona for a first and a second. Let's see, Calgary gets the win. So we're seeing some movement from teams here, which makes me think that we might just possibly have some available options. At least I hope. Now you see Arizona with Grabner now, so teams appear to be lightening up a little bit. Soderstrom we don't need. Erhovakanainen is not going to be available to us. Hamannick, Ronaldo, I mean, obviously not. Zach Smith. Chicago must be doing well. It's the one thing I keep forgetting to do is to look at the standings. Uh, Corey Perry and Matthias Janmark, huh? I mean, Perry's doing well. He fits in on the top line. Janmark also fits into the top six. The problem is, who we have in the top six right now don't fit on the third line. So, and again, I just, I don't know if bringing Corey Perry back to Anaheim is exactly the uh, blockbuster move that we can make. But I am still just being taunted by Montreal with that trio still being available. And unfortunately, they're still just... Okay, here we go. There it is. Pittsburgh, Zucker, Hornquist, and Sherry, potentially Tanev as well. We also have Bozak, but then Sunquist as well, so I don't think Tyler Bozak's enough. Let's go talk to Pittsburgh. And indeed, they see uh, Philip Hollander on Toronto. Of course, his roster is up to date. To Foley, Sutter, and Levo. Eh. We're going to go talk to Pittsburgh instead. For sure. They are the uh, best bet for us right now if these players fit. Zucker might not fit. Hornquist might not fit. Sherry might not fit. Ugh. What about Tanev? Might not fit at all. <laughs> Good lord. Well, that is incredibly disappointing. That these guys aren't really going to fit the team, apparently. Now, it's not, you know, in full, let me know for sure, but... Oh, man. That sucks. That really sucks. I think we have to go for it anyway, though. Zucker, Hornquist, and Connor Sherry. The one stumbling block here will be uh, cap space. So, we'll see what we have. And what we can potentially move here. I don't really know what the answer is in terms of who I'm cool with getting rid of. But if we do look at the trade value. I mean, Trevor Zegra, not really... Uh, he's doing okay. Max Comtois, though, I think is expendable at this point. He can be the big piece of this trade to help push this through. And then I just have to add in other players... Into the deal. So like Kyle Criscuolo, Blake Pietala. And I'd be over the cap. Apparently. So we'll take you out. Does Pittsburgh have a goalie on the block? If they have Murray or Jari. Which they don't. Did they keep both of them? Yeah they did. Fair enough. I was hoping one of them would be available. That would certainly help. How the hell am I going to do this? Because Zucker and Hornquist have a lot of money tied up between them. And I don't exactly know how these two are going to fit in on the team yet. 
And obviously some of these contracts are uh, rough, to say the least. I mean, Edler Myers, Lindholm, Backus. I mean, Backus seems like the obvious one to try and get rid of. What if I can get rid of Christian Juice and Cody Curran? Still be over the cap. What if they retain salary on Connor Sherry? Because it doesn't say for next season. It does say for this season. Still be over the cap. Damn. Take up Kyle Criscolo. Is there anybody I can add here to get this deal done? Doesn't really look like it. God, Anaheim's goalie situation is dire. Michael Delzada, how much are you making? Michael Delzada's making league men, huh? He's not going to be enough to push that over. I don't know who is going to be enough to push that over because, unfortunately, that fourth line's doing really well. Uh, Nick Delorier, not going to be enough to push it over. What if they retain a little bit on Patrick Hornquist? What's it going to take in terms of retention to have me not be over the salary cap? I'm going to have to give up a lot to push this deal through. There we go. I'd be over for next year now. Oof, and if I do this, I don't know how many more deals I'm going to be able to make. Right. So we have Comtois. We know the Comtois is out. Right now it's, uh, gets off for kill. Silverberg was doing all right. Adam Henrique is okay. He just never seems to sim well for me. Steele's doing fine. Bacchus is doing great. Milano has a good point total at least. Rowney's been fine. Jones has been fine. Like, there isn't that clear-cut guy to get rid of. There really isn't. Unless we do a sweep here. Unless we do a sweep and we look at this defense. Josh Manson's been okay, but not great. Tanev's been fine. Lindholm's been fine. Meyer's okay. Edler. I mean, Fowler's putting up points, but 5-on-5, five five, he's struggling. Not that I want to get rid of Cam Fowler. But I do wonder... If we move Josh Manson in this deal, right? Bear with me. Say I also look to move... Now, Chris Tanev can play the third pair. Manson has to play that second pair. Say we move Manson and Myers. Because I have a different deal in mind. I don't know if that deal will work either, but damn it, we can try. Say we have Zucker, Hornquist, Sherry, Comtois, Manson, and Myers. A lot of cap being uh, thrown around here, for sure. Let me just safety net it with uh, those picks there. So we have 50% on Sherry. I think I basically have no choice but to try and get 50% on Hornquist. And then Pittsburgh won't really be able to retain that much else. This won't go through. Uh, it would in terms of value, but I guess we added a bit too much. The first is a bit too much as well. Really no reason to safety net it unless I have to add in draft picks to another deal, but I don't think I'll have to. Will this go through? Not as it stands. We'll go ahead and uh, add in our first round pick next year. Will that work? The answer is yes. So we get a blockbuster deal done with the Pittsburgh Penguins. We have obviously moved a defenseman or two. However, you might know where I'm going with this for my final move. We're going to Montreal, and we are going to look to pick up Petrie, Weber, and Tomas Tatar. That is the play. Is this a smart move? I have no idea. But we're going to see what happens. So again, it's going to be one, two, three. So just to take a look here. So Jeff Petrie fits in well in the second pairing. Weber in on the third. Which means we have Alex Edler in the top four. Fowler in the top four. Lindholm in the top four. And then Tanev on the third pairing with uh, Shea Weber. So that actually works out perfectly if we can get that deal done. And then forward-wise, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12... Jones is in, so Troy Terry and Trevor Zegra might be on the outs here, potentially. 
Let's see. Getzloff looking good. Raquel looking good. Silverberg. We don't know how Zucker's going to do. I'm a little bit worried about Henrique. But just based off of uh, overall here. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 with Jones. So I think, yeah, Terry and Zegra, despite putting up points, they've been so bad 5-on-5. Five five. I think it's worth sacrificing them here to get this deal done. Yeah, 9, 10, 11, and 12 with Jones, which means someone like Sonny Milano could be on the outs too, and then we keep the fourth line, hopefully, of Bacchus, Rowney, Jones, and that way we completely rework the middle six. By moving on from Milano, Terry, and Zegra, who I just don't think are ready for the sake of a one-year challenge. Which means we go to Montreal, and we need them to retain as much as possible. This is our, uh, this is our shot right here. We get them to retain as much as possible. I should be able to add in enough on the deal to let this go through. And then hopefully... Uh, we can make a run with this team. We don't even know if we're going to make the playoffs. And as it stands, unless they retain salary on Jeff Petrie, I might be over for next year, too. We might have to break up that fourth line, even though they've been fantastic. Yep, that's what it looks like. Who the hell am I going to be able to add in here to make this work? Damn. I really don't want to get rid of Bacchus. Is Delorier enough? No. Is someone like Cody Curran? going to be enough. No. Do the Habs have a goaltender on the block? Keith Kincaid, huh? Right. Keith Kincaid. Well, I wish I could get Carey Price on half salary for the memes. It's going to be tough to pull this off. I don't really know how the hell we're going to do it. Without, like I said, having to... Uh, Having to dip into changing salary for next year. I mean, we could. I mean, trying to shop David Backus is the right move. But honestly, he's been fantastic on that fourth line. That's why it's tough. Maybe we move Carter Rowney? Rowney's actually... Or no, we don't move Connor Rowney. Connor Sherry? If I add Connor Sherry to this. Connor Sherry's not enough. What the hell are we going to do here? It's got to be David Backus, though. I really like David Backus on the fourth line. But this is the move to make. It's not going to go through on its own, I'm sure. Yeah, we have another major player or two to add to this deal. I mean, if I can even add two players. Uh, Isaac Lundstrom is the guy to add to try and push this through. It will not go through, though. So Sonny Milano doesn't have that great a trade value. We'll go ahead and add in our first rounder this year. Will that go through? The answer is no. They don't want to retain that much salary. So I'll try to knock some salary off of it as long as we're still good to go in terms of not being over the cap next year. I don't know how far down we're going to have to lower the Jeff Petrie value to make this a fair trade. Hopefully not too much further. It's a little bit tedious, but this is, uh, this is a hell of a deal. And we hit our limit on uh, on retention. That still didn't go through. We're going to have to take out Terry. I'd be over the cap again, so sorry to Montreal, but you have to retain more on Jeff Petrie. We might not actually be able to get this to go through, unless I use somebody like Edler, and then we have Del Zotto on defense, which was not uh, you know, part of the plan. So seeing here what we have... Does it make sense to use Sam Steele? It's been a good point, producer. But he might have to go. Well, maybe Josh Mohora will be enough. This is uh, this is going to be a big trade. I think I have to use Sam Steele to push it through. The deal is done. Huge risk to get rid of Sam Steele. We'll see what happens, though. So we are locked in. It's Edler, Weber, Petrie, Fowler, Lindholm, and Tanev. Just go ahead. Del Zotto will get claimed, I'm sure. There you go. He gets picked up by Los Angeles. And then forward-wise, now we have 10, 11, 12 with Troy Terry, who will stay in 
on this team. We ended up changing it by quite a bit. It is uh, essentially unrecognizable at this point. Let's see here. So we really do need Hornquist on the second or the fourth line. Tatar can play pretty much anywhere. I think that's kind of the benefit as a lot of these guys can play pretty much anywhere we need them to. I think Troy Terry, if I change him over to a grinder, having him as our fourth line center, actually Carter Rowney as our fourth line center makes a lot of sense. And then for that third line, I mean, I still want to keep uh, Silverberg, Getzloff, for Kell together because they've been great. So now it's just, you know, carving out the middle six here. Tatar is slightly better on the second line, as is Milano, as is Sherry. Hornquist has to play on the second. Henrik's better on the third. And Zucker's better on the third. So out of that, who is going to be the extra man on the third line? I guess it makes sense overall-wise for it to be Sonny Milano. But it won't be. Actually, Milano's slightly better. Yeah, it makes sense for it to be Sonny Milano. So we have to change around some of the player types. I'm almost tempted to just say, come playoff time, we'll do that. But all in all, I mean, there's no denying the team is better. It's just whether or not they're actually going to perform. We don't have a natural center on that second line. That hurts. But the team's, the team's looking pretty good. And again, that third pairing... I mean, Weber has to be on the second, Lindholm on the uh, first. So it's going to be Petrie and Weber. And then Edler and Fowler. Oof. What do we want to do there? Actually, Lindholm's not too bad there with Tanev. That's the team. I can get slightly better chemistry with line combinations. Only way that's going to be worth it. I mean, really, I think this team... It's not going to be too big of a deal if I don't edit the combos now or the uh, chemistry. This team, as it stands, should be good enough to make it. I think we'll edit the chemistry if we were to make it. And we'll see what happens. Now's the time to find out if this team can push for a playoff spot. We had to change quite a bit. We'll see whether or not it pans out. We lose our first two games in the aftermath, being outscored uh, quite handily. We'll go ahead and turn off those reports. We've lost three games in a row. We don't make it four. We shut out Colorado, but this team is going to have to go on a run to make the best of this. Two wins make it three now in a row. Maybe we are catching our stride here a little bit. Four wins in a row. Can't make it five against New Jersey. This is the month to prove that we can do this and that we're contenders. If we lose to Minnesota, which we didn't, and we accidentally backed out there. I'm a little bit worried about having not changed the chemistry. We're seven points back, but technically now just four points out of a playoff spot. We can definitely do this. We can definitely make it. Like I said, my own laziness might cost us in terms of me not changing anything, but... You know, it be what it do, and we'll see what we can do from here. We've won two out of three, up to 35 wins now. We're going to need at least 40, minimum, to have a threatening chance here. Another couple of wins. We lose to Edmonton. We are right there. We're not currently in a wild card spot, though. This close. One point technically out on tiebreaker. We're right there. Can we beat the Calgary Flames? Yes, we can. The Ducks are currently in a playoff spot. No guarantees that we make it, though. Vancouver is next. They won their last game, and they win that one as well. Edmonton's a tough task, but we beat them 3-0. Three, three games to go, currently in a playoff spot. We have the chance here. 85 points. We're ahead of the Coyotes on tiebreaker. Look at that, though. Nashville, Colorado, Arizona, all right there. Dallas, we win. That should just about seal our spot. Arizona has a... We have a game at hand on Arizona, both at 87 points. Nashville, St. Louis, and Colorado all right there. We can't afford to lose. We play the LA Kings, and we win, and the Anaheim Ducks. Step one is complete. The Ducks are in the postseason. 
This time out in a wild card spot, we'll be taking on the Chicago Blackhawks in the postseason. So, very, very good there. And we were able to get the job done and make it. Silverberg, 39 goals. Getzloff was strong. Raquel was a tremendous setup man. And we take a look here. Patrick Hornquist, 19 points in 24 games upon his acquisition. Connor Sherry, 19 points in 24 games. And Tomas Tatar, 18 points in 24 games. That third line, Jason Zucker, 12 points in 24. Very good. Adam Henrique, of course, 47 points. Yeah. And then Sonny Milano did very well with 21 goals. That fourth line, uh, not as good as it was. Troy Terry, very disappointing. Carter Rowney had a phenomenal season, as did Max Jones. So now that we've gotten this set up, I'll see you in a moment. We're going to optimize these lines, and then the playoff push begins. All right, so the stage is set. Ducks and Blackhawks in the first round. Before we get to that, at the very least, I'll give you a look at what happened around the league. Why not? As Connor McDavid led the way in terms of the point race, the goal scoring race as well, I presume, with 56, 55 for Nikita Kucherov. Hot damn. For defenseman Eric Sharkelson leads the way, the goal scoring king. Also, Sharkelson, 220 goal scoring defenseman for the San Jose Sharks. There you go. Winning his goaltender, Mikko Koskinen. Shutout leader, Hutton, Lundqvist, and Vasilevsky. Save percentage leader for a starter, Henrik Lundqvist likely just won the Vesna. Hot damn. For rookies, it's going to be Capo Caco most likely over Jacques. Uh, Colin White up there for Ottawa. So there you go. Look at what happened around the league. You get a full look at the playoff tree. It's Winnipeg, St. Louis. Our series, Edmonton plays Vancouver, San Jose plays Arizona, and in the East, the Rangers, Flyers, Caps, Leafs, Sabres, Bruins, Lightning, and Devils. I don't know how the Devils made it either, don't ask. So we get into this series against Chicago. Let's do this. You know the deal. We'll take a look at what their lines currently look like, as it's Debrinkit, Taves, Kane, Kubelik, Strom, Nylander, Saad, Doc, Shaw, Kajula, Kampf, and Smith. Defensively, Keith Murphy, Mata Seabrook, Dahan, and Boakvist. The goaltenders, Crawford, and Malcolm Saban. So, all in all, pretty damn good team, as you'd expect. And, of course, in terms of the overall ratings, uh, well, they have the edge offensively. We actually have the edge in goaltending and in defense. We'll see if that happens to hold up. Not holding my breath on that one. Let's do this again. Step one complete. We made the playoffs, but now we need to win the whole damn thing. Let's see if we can do just that. First period goes well. Silverberg and Shaw with the goals. Second period, we have the lead. Ricard Kell on the power play. We're going to quick sim this, unless it's an elimination game. So here we go. Third period, and we're going to overtime. Murphy ties it. Silverberg gives us the lead. Kane scores Five seconds later, it is physically impossible to get to that part of the ice in five seconds. I'm willing to bet. But hot damn. There it is. It's not impossible. I'm just upset. We're going to quick sim this overtime. Game one goes to the Chicago Blackhawks. Connor Murphy scores his second of the game. Talk about goal scoring defenseman. Playoff Tave shows up. And we blow a tremendous chance to take a one to nothing lead. In this series, as unfortunate as that is. We'll go to game two. See what we can do from here. First period, Chicago strikes Duncan Keith on the power play. Second period, two goals for us in that one. Kane gets one as well. So Jones and Milano gave us the lead. Tied it and gave us the lead. Kane ties it. Third period, and it does not matter as the Blackhawks take game two as well. Tave scores on the power play. Fowler ties it. And Patrick Kane is able to score. The winning goal. So Kane and Taves showing up. Uh, yeah, not so much for John Gibson. Back-to-back 4-3 -back finals. And this Ducks team, despite making the playoffs, it's not looking too good here for us. We need that home team trend to be a thing. Otherwise, we'll see what happens. First period of Game 3, goal apiece, Shaw and Rowney. Second period, Chicago has the lead with Dylan Strom. And in the third... We tie it. Alex Edler sends this one to overtime. 
But is it worth it? 3 2 1. No, it's not. Jonathan Taves wins it on the power play in overtime. The Blackhawks have a 3 to nothing series lead on this Ducks team. Son of a duck. Haha, you see, you see, you see what I did there. Yeah, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. It's game four. We might as well just go for it. Are we uh, truly one and done? By not making it out of the first round. First period, good start. Fowler and Jones. Second period, hey, there we go. Sherry and a shorty for Rowney. And they made it interesting with Strom and Kubelik scoring. But Zucker on the power play makes it 5-2. And we hold on and we live to see another day. Thanks to a strong performance from the third line. Zucker and Henrique. A big part of that. So, not quite where we want to be. We head to game five. Can we survive? Is the question. Let's find out. First period is scoreless. Twelve shots to five. Second period is not scoreless. Two goals for the captain, Ryan Getzloff. Third period. We hold on to win again. Sonny Milano ices it. Three to nothing. Your final score. John Gibson with a 30 save shutout. Good to see him show up. And all of a sudden, the Ducks are back in this one. Love to see that. We force game six back on home ice. Anything can happen now, truly, at this point in the game. Let's see what happens, though. First period, goal apiece to Brinkett and Edler. Second period, two more goals for the Ducks. Fowler and a power play tally from Silverberg. Quick sim to third period. The Anaheim Ducks have come back from 3 nothing down to force game seven against the Chicago Blackhawks. We might be due for a very interesting way to kick off this short-term kind of series here to end NHL 20. It's Game 7. Are we going to the second round? Let's find out. First period, and Chicago has the lead. Ricard Raquel scores, but it's Kubelik and Kane to give them the lead. Second period, oh, Jesus. Doc and Nylander, 4-1 Chicago. So we begin the third period, and it appears as though the comeback from 3 to nothing down was all for naught. The Blackhawks are going to stave off elimination. They are going to survive this and move on. Henrique scores, but it's way too little too late. Henrique scores again. Too little too late, perhaps. One minute to go. And indeed, it was too little too late. The Chicago Blackhawks survive. They avoid the reverse sweep. And they eliminate the Anaheim Ducks in the first round. You hate to see that. We start off a challenge. And we do so rather unsuccessfully. Adam Henrique, have yourself a series, but... Uh, Connor Sherry was okay. Thomas Tatar, Patrick Hornquist let us down. In a big-time way, uh, defensively, I mean, eh, Lindholm and Weber could have been a tiny bit better. Goaltending-wise, Gibson was all right. It's just we started a bit too slow out of the gates and simply could not recover. With that, we will sim to at least see who wins the Stanley Cup. But our job here is done. So I hope you enjoyed... Uh, this new video and at least are uh, intrigued to see what happens uh, with this short-term series again leading up to NHL 21 didn't feel as though I'd have enough time to kind of do a full series as Chicago went on to win the Stanley Cup didn't feel as though I'd have time to do a full series at this point so we're doing this instead and again hopefully uh, it catches your interest piques your interest and we'll see how this goes but at the very least we start off this one and done challenge with a gigantic L we fail with Anaheim. We march on. Arizona's up next. Let's hope it goes just a little bit better.